Welcome to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Each week on this program, Jeff and his guests share their expertise, personal anecdotes, and the latest industry news to keep you in the loop. Now to provide you with insight and help you navigate the consistently changing world of real estate lending, here is your host for The Mortgage Voice, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, 888-713-2929. That's our telephone number. Pick up the phone and give us a call. We're talking mortgages. We're talking real estate. We're talking all kinds of things that uh, you're going to have to make up your mind this year, whether you're going to buy in this crazy market. Yes, the market is tight. Properties are flying off the shelf. However, I got to tell you, I'm involved in a couple of real estate deals right now myself, and I don't really do a ton of real estate deals anymore. I used to be mm, fairly active. I'd do at least one or two a month for many, many years. And what I found out when a uh, market gets like this is that... Uh, you find a lot of resistance from buyers to go beyond what they're comfortable doing, even though that's what it's going to take in order to get the property. What do I mean by that? Uh, let's say, for instance, that you're a buyer and there's a property out there for 700000 Yes, those are the prices right now, 700000 And it's a townhome and it's in a you know, a pretty nice gated community and there's a swimming pool and all the bells and whistles that you're going to need with that kind of product. So you're, you're trying to figure out $700,000 um, what beyond that that you don't want to do? Because nobody's comfortable paying that kind of money for a townhome in a gated community. And I don't care where it is, whether you're on the coast or whether you're in you know, a, a really nice place in Rancho or you're out in the highlands in Vegas or any number of communities up in the Tahoe area, you just don't want to pay that much. So you're looking around to see where you can get something from the seller. The seller's thinking, no way, I'm not paying for any any uh, uh repairs to the house. I'm not giving any concessions. Concessions, boy, they went out the window, what, about six, seven years ago? Concessions are when seller pays for, you know, two, three, five percent of the closing cost of the buyer. But they don't do that anymore. And in a market like this, so we're talking about buyers who have got that you know, that I just don't want to pay anymore. $700,000 may not be at my limit, but it just seems not right. When we're looking at comparables from a year, uh, even two years ago, which are fifty dollars to $100,000 less, their sellers are trying to justify a jump in prices, which just aren't there. Buyers don't want to pay that, so they want something from, anyway, I'm in a deal right now. The buyer wants all the TVs. Get that, all the TVs. I think there's four of them in the house. Now, granted, how much could that be? 2500 for four TVs. TVs, maybe something like that, really. You know, flat screens, pretty easy. They didn't want, you know, anything else, just the four TVs. So the seller and the buyer are going back and forth about these TVs that neither one of them really cares about. But you know what? It's because the market is what it is. It's tense. It's people are like fighting over crumbs, even though it crumb it costs you 700 grand. So if you're out there right now and you're thinking, this is that type of market, you're going to need to have a, a good lender, uh, somebody who can help you with your pre-approval process to make sure that not only are you pre-approved, but that you can find somebody who can streamline the process more quickly so that when you go in with that offer and you can say, hey, look, um, here's my pre-approval letter, and they say that we can get this done in X amount of days, less than 30 days. That would be something that would be valuable to you. Now, a lot of deals aren't like that. I'm currently involved in a VA deal myself, and this particular deal, you know, VA is, is government, so they require uh, a lot more documentation and more time. So we're going through uh, a company called USAA, and everybody out there who is a veteran probably knows USAA. Anybody who watches TV knows that commercial, you know, uh, Navy Credit Federal Union, that's another one. Um, and all of these companies require that the unit or the units that you're going to be buying has a, a, a VA certificate number, and then the borrower has to have a certificate of eligibility. Well, these things plus you know everything other thing uh, about a VA loan. And by the way, VA loans, 100% financing, 100% guaranteed. So it's pretty good. The conforming limit in um, San Bernardino Riverside. Uh, is different than that of L.A. or different than every other county in the U.S. Every county has their own conforming limits to either VA or FHA, and I believe um, in, uh, I want to say 669, 600, something like that. Uh, it could be a little less in San Bernardino or Riverside counties. And by the way, hi, everybody out there. It's been a while since I've been on the air, and I really appreciate you hanging in there last couple of weeks when we did a couple of reruns. If you've uh, listened to the show, uh, we're on KMET, KCAA, and we're also on K Tahoe as well as a Roadrunner. Uh, the show's also aired on themortgagevoice.com. It's our um, 
online presence where this is a TV show and you can hear me, see me, uh, kind of like the old Who song, Feel Me. You remember that, Daryl? Remember that song? Yeah, that's a great old song. It's from Tommy, See Me, Feel Me. I know. I love that. Love that. And I'm dating myself. Anybody out there who's under 40 years old is going, who? Tommy who? This guy, we got to <laughs> drop a dime on it. Sounds like a creeper to me. Anyway, I'm Jeff Barton. I really appreciate you listening to the show. A um, couple things have come up. Uh, obviously, anybody out there who's looking at rates, Rates are very important, and they're going up. Uh, we're looking at the high fours right now, so we're probably by the end of the year five to five and a quarter percent. Um, ran across a great article in Mortgage News, and everybody who listens to the show knows that's where we go for most of our information. It says in this article that nearly a third of American homeowners have no idea what their mortgage rate is. Think about that for a second. You're sitting there, you're driving around right now, you're listening to this show, you've got a mortgage. Do you know what your rate is? I remember my first rate. I remember my second rate. I remember the rate that we just paid off, five and uh, 5.125%, 15-year fixed. Now, if you're an American and you're driving around or, or you're a foreigner and you're driving, I'm, you know what? I believe that foreign citizens probably know better what their rates are than American citizens. Why? Because really you're only thinking about what the, what the actual payment is. And it, it's like a car payment, right? You're only worried if you can get into the property and make the monthly payment. You're not really worried about what the rate is, although a rate, as you know, quarter percent over a 30-year can cost you tens and thousands of dollars uh, over a lower rate. So you got to be very very, very rate conscious. As a matter of fact, it's almost worth it to buy down the rate. If you've got a rate and you're looking to actually get a lower rate, look at how you can, uh, let's say you're being quoted now at 5%, let's just say, and you can get yourself a 4.75% or 4.875% rate. Figure out what the difference is, what it costs to buy down to that rate and how long it's going to do before that uh, rate starts paying off in savings. If it's five years or less and you plan to stay in the property 30 years, it may be something that's actually worthwhile doing. Why? Because saving you know, $10,000, $20,000 over the life of the loan is a good idea. And anything that you can put towards principal Let's say that you began to save that money after five years, but the difference in the payment that you'd be making towards principal is different now, so that you'd be actually paying off the loan a little bit sooner. It's a very smart idea. It's a lot of people think about it like that, and certainly buying down rate in any market is, you know, it depends on how much scratch you got in the bank. I mean, it could cost you a point to get you an eighth. Right, so a point on a seven hundred thousand dollar loan is seven thousand dollars. So is it worth paying seven thousand dollars to get an eighth less? Well, you have to figure out what the cost of that particular eighth is going to be, and over how long, how much is going to the savings is going to be to you add up to seven thousand dollars. Now, if it's a seven hundred thousand dollar loan and it's an eighth. You know, I bet it's more like three or four years. And uh, you have to think: Am I going to be in the property five years, ten years? It may be worth it if you have the three. Uh, um, the um, seven thousand dollars in the bank, uh, and if you one of those customers out there who's always rate shopping, you know exactly what I mean. But if you're someone who's just thinking about, hey, I just want to get into the property, I just can make the monthly payment. Maybe um, think about some alternative ways that you can do property. That you know these kind of things come up, and uh, if you need help figuring that out, you got to talk to a good loan officer and. Certainly, everybody at uh, my company, Malibu Funding, Inc., they're the sponsor of the show. Really appreciate um, that company doing the sponsorship. But uh, here at The Mortgage Voice, we have access to all kinds of great agents, people who can help you in that decision-making process. And by the way, that's kind of what we do on the show. We try to give you ideas and uh, information that will help you make decisions, better decisions anyway, about your financing of a home, whether it be now or in the future. Maybe you need, you know, obviously some uh, uh, help to buy a home and you have another borrower that's got to be on the loan. You have basically yourself, your spouse, maybe you've got a relative. Uh, all these things that you need to understand about getting a loan, especially in this market. Look, prices are high. I get it. And believe me, FHA prices are not cheap either. Um, if, if we're rising up to over 5%, well, that historically is pretty low, but it's going to cost you. Every point on $100,000 is going to cost you 100 bucks. So if it's a $700,000 loan and it's an extra point, it's going to cost you another $700 a month on the loan. So it's a 5%, uh, you know, $3,500, $4,000 with interest in taxes and insurance. 
Yeah, that's a lot of money every month. It's uh, fifty thousand dollars a year. So if you if you got those kind of decisions that you got to be making, you really got to talk to somebody who knows what the heck they're talking about. Uh, and and uh, whether it's me or whether it's somebody else in the mortgage professional, and when you get out there and you start shopping around, you will hear things that you cannot believe. Matter of fact, if you listen to the commercials right now on television, and you you know it's funny, Rocket Mortgage. And, and Daryl, I want to ask you this: Have you heard the new Rocket Mortgage commercial? Uh, I wouldn't know it's a new one unless you told me which one it okay, was. Okay, so the new one says, it used to say that, you know, these people floating around and you can get within, you know, minute uh, uh, pre-approval. Yeah, now you're it's going to do it from the soccer field. Yeah, well, yeah. it says now it's eight minutes. So they've obviously figured out that there's nobody that's going to believe a minute, but eight minutes, you know. Yeah, it's, there you go. I know. Yeah, hey, we're working hard for your money. <laughs> thank you very much for jumping in. Hey, I'm Jeff Barton. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host for the uh, Mortgage Voice, and we'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, 888-713-2929. That's our telephone number. Pick up the phone and give us a call. We are talking real estate and we are talking mortgages. And by the way, I am buried I am so inundated with um, transactions and things to do. You know, it's one of the things that um, hmm, time is not your own in the real estate business. And I know that anybody out there who's in the business is laughing right now because they're saying, yeah, we all know the reason why you're a little stressed out. Well, it's because buyers and sellers, they're anxious. Uh, The market is tight with real estate and Obviously, rates going up don't help in terms of uh, that. Inventory is low. Yeah, there's a lot of things conflating the issues of stress for realtors. But certainly, if you're a buyer and seller right now, um, the game is on. And so, uh, I've, I've this week I wanted to bring a couple of guests to the show that uh, talk a little bit about different ways to do business in the real estate market. I know in the past we've talked about uh, cryptocurrency and how that's being used uh, to buy and sell real estate. Well, lo and behold, uh, one of our affiliate managers called me, Bill Bruns, who's been on the show before, and said, I have a person. And so um, I'm very happy to have on uh, Piper Moretti on to the show today, who is a, uh, a real estate um, agent? Are you also a, a broker, Piper? Nope, I'm an agent. Okay, Piper is a, and your agency again, or your uh, brokerage? Uh, my bro- I hang my license with Christie's International. Okay, excellent. I knew all that, but I just thought I wanted to get you on more quickly. Anyway, welcome to the show, Piper Moretti, who is um, going to talk to us today about cryptocurrency and how she's being able to use it in real estate transactions. How are you, Piper? I'm great. Thanks for having me. And thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, okay, let's let's first of all, because many people are thinking cryptocurrency, the, the brand name is a Bitcoin, of course, and there are many, many other cryptocurrencies. Explain yeah. a little bit about how you got into this end of the business using this as collateral for loans and collateral for uh, uh, purchasing properties. Right, right. Well, uh, it just kind of found me uh, at the end of 2016. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, it was, I guess it was meant to be. Yep. Um, I had some buyers find me uh, who were, were kind of new to uh, the Los Angeles area, and they've been looking around for a while, and they um, were honing in on uh, Manhattan Beach. Uh, they just found me online randomly, and uh, we hit it off after a few um, uh, properties, and uh, they said, oh, by the way, we're going to buy in Bitcoin. And I thought, Okay, well, going to make that work somehow. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and it hadn't, it, it had only been done uh, once before that I know of uh, up in Tahoe. Right. And it was huh. a Bitcoin to cash transaction. So, um, yeah, so we basically just bootstrapped it. Um, you know, long story short, I did a lot of Googling, a, a lot of contacts, and um, we eventually, you know, made, made all the pieces come together and we made it work. Now, uh, in that, there is a conversion or there is a valuation issue. How, how did you solve that? Well, okay, so there's there's two ways to do it. Um, you know, there's we we have done uh, the, a crypto to cash conversion. Okay. Um, we can also do a crypto to crypto, uh, and that's a that's a whole other ball of wax. But I'll I'll focus <laughs> on the, the Bitcoin to cash okay. for now. Um, we we've used a payment processor. Um, I've done five. 
Uh, four out of those five, huh? we've, we've used uh, BitPay, which is a, a payment processor that um, takes Bitcoin and converts it to uh, regular uh, fiat or U.S. dollars, uh, and then uh, it's, just, it's just a plain wire transfer uh, to escrow. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, they charge a 1% fee. Um, which, you know, can kind of get a little pricey, you know, when you're looking in the, you know, three and a half million dollar range. Sure. But um, a lot of crypto buyers just don't, they're just happy to be able to use their Bitcoin um, so that they don't really bother with that. You know, they, they don't care. They're just happy to, to be able to make a transaction. So the currency itself has to be sold, then converted, then obviously wired over to escrow. Is that how it works? Kind of, yeah. I mean, it it, it is. Um, so what happens, I, I do have a, an escrow company uh, in Southern California who uh, is set up with BitPay, and so that makes okay. it a lot easier because sure. before that we either had to transfer directly to the seller or we had to find a third party or something, you know. So what happens is uh, escrow will generate an invoice just like they would um, wire transfer instructions, mm-hmm. uh, and they do that through BitPay, and then BitPay... Uh, sends an, an email link to the buyer, and then they they send you know whatever Bitcoin amounts to you know is the amount for the purchase price, uh, and then uh, that goes through BitPay. BitPay converts it and then sends that or wires that to escrow. So whatever the price, you know the, the volatility is always you know uh, the burden on the buyer. So you sure. know, whatever the price of Bitcoin is, you know that's that's what it's going to be. But the but the um, Price is always going to be the price, you know, of, of the house. Right. It's a three million dollar house. It's, it's still going to remain three million dollars. So the day of the transaction, whatever the value is of that cryptocurrency at that moment, that's what it's sold as, or is there is there a steadier way to do it, whereby you can kind of look? Uh, let's say you're an owner of, I guess, cryptocurrency, and you're trying to value what it is today, and then go out and purchase a home or a condo or something like that. How can you really? I guess, um, secure the fact that that is what the price, I mean, or the value of the cryptocurrency is going to be tomorrow based on the volatility in it. Is is that somewhat of an issue for buyers? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, my, my last buyer, um, you know, we, we did this back in uh, late December, you know, when, you know, the prices were, you know, falling from, you know, 20 grand. I right. think it was down to about 16 and, you know, he was a very savvy crypto investor, and, you know, he was he was kind of sweating it out a little bit because he, he wanted to hurry up and get the funds into escrow before it went down, you know, anymore. Right, of course. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, the, they give you, uh, BitPay gives you 15 minutes, you know, to, to secure this um, um, wire transfer. So, and then what, what we did for that particular transaction, he, he knew it was going to go down more. Um, you know, just based on, uh, you know, the, the math and everything. Sure. And he just wanted to hurry up and just get the funds into escrow. Didn't care when it was. And just, you know, I think the funds were even in escrow maybe two weeks before we even closed. I see. And sure enough, it went down. Uh, and so, wow. yeah, he ended up getting, you know, a lot more for his money, so to speak. Now, in working with uh, buyers, I guess, is, is who you work with, right? Is it difficult in negotiating with the seller when you have this kind of a, I guess financial or financing, uh, or do they understand how it works? Do you have to do a lot of education to your sellers agents? You know, the first time we we did, um, you know, we had to have a, a sit down, you know, roundtable discussion, you know, with BitPay. Uh, we got very lucky; the CTO just happened to be <laughs> passing through town, um, wow. and you know, it was very new. And you know, the the I joke about it now, but you know, at the at the time, you know, the seller's agent was dead set against you know the whole thing. Sure, um, you know, was convinced that we were trying to scam them. <laughs> right? No, and, I understand. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I totally I get it too. You know. Um, it's it's very new and you know and it, and it comes with a reputation I know, um, but you know the the other sellers that I've dealt with, they don't care how they get the money, they just want the money you know and I, and there right. hasn't been a lot of education you know they just all I have to say is look we're going to do it this way you know I have to be transparent obviously we're going to do it this way you will get the cash and as long as that happens. Nobody cares, and usually the um, the good faith deposit, you know, is right. kind of proof in the pudding. You know, once that goes through, everybody kind of takes a deep breath and is like, "Okay, we're you know we're we're not getting scammed here." You know. So the deposit is also cryptocurrency. Uh huh. 
Oh, so the whole transaction is done with, you know, a cryptocurrency. Uh, if, just by the way, are you using mostly Bitcoin? Because obviously that's the most, I guess, uh, expensive or the most valued uh, of the cryptocurrencies. Yes, yes. Uh, all of my transactions have been in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, I am getting actually a lot more calls uh, for other coins, you know, which is totally doable. You know, right. um, if it's like kind of an ex obscure coin, you know, that these payment processors don't deal with, then, you know, yeah, we can transfer that to Bitcoin and then we can cash out the Bitcoin. You know, it's not, it, it's totally doable. But, you know, um, you know, these payment processors are adding on, you know, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, that can all be done. Okay, and uh, can you shout out your phone number for me, please, just so people, because I know there's a lot of people out there right now who are just, they're going, hi, how do we get involved with this? Because <laughs> I didn't realize we could convert and I'll get this done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my direct line is 310-403-6580. Okay, excellent. And um, uh, just in, in closing, let's say you were to, uh, do, do you think that using bit, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency is as easy or as convenient and do you think this is something that will continue or do you think it's a kind of a flash in the pan i honestly don't think it's a flash in the pan um you know seeing what's what's happening uh, around this uh you know this blockchain technology and cryptocurrency right. you know there's there's new coins that are added gosh <laughs> every day it seems like yeah i um, agree yeah, and, you know, and I'm working with, you know, platforms like, you know, uh, mortgage lenders and, you know, end-to-end -end transactions, you know, who are putting everything up on the blockchain, and we're going to be able, you know, I've, I'm guessing, you know, two to five years down the line, we're going to be able to, you know, fund loans in 48 hours. We're going to be able to close in five to seven days, you know, because it, it, we're, everything's going to be in one place. Right. Um, as far as Bitcoin's concerned, you know, and cryptocurrency, that's not going away either. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if Bitcoin's going to, you know, come out the winner, you know, with all these coins, but right now it's the standard, um, right. you know, which every other coin is kind of built on, so to speak. You know, there's, yes. there's other blockchains, you know, there's other technology, but, you know, so far, you know, Bitcoin's the, the first and, you know, standardized, I guess. Yeah. Hey, Piper, thank you very much for coming on yeah. the show. That's very educational. I want to have you back because this is a continuing issue. Uh, not an issue, but it's a continuing solution, really, for a lot of buyers out there. And I really appreciate you spending time with us. Oh, my pleasure. Thank oh, you. Then thank you very much. That's uh, Piper Moretti from uh, Sotheby's? Uh, Christie's. Christie's. Christie's, yeah, sorry. No, no, no problem. <laughs> uh, my company is also the Crypto Realty Group, and you can check out my website. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, 888-713-2929. That's the telephone number. Pick up the phone. Give us a call. We talk a lot about mortgages. You know what? We talk mostly about mortgages. We talk about real estate. We talk about the demand out there in the marketplace and the scarcity of product. Uh, rates are going up, as everybody knows. You don't have to be that observant to see that and what how it costs you as the consumer out there. Uh, and what we try to do is give you some answers. You know, there's great loan officers, there's good programs, there's real estate agents that are terrific. But in the final analysis, really, how are you going to get through the stress of the deal? As I told you in the first segment, I am bonkers stressed right now because of the myriad number of buyers and sellers who are all over you, especially when they can't get what they want or they don't have, you know, enough experience to make decisions to make the right decision. So, I brought back to the show, once again, Dr. Jeannie Bertoli to talk a little bit about the emotional stress in all of these deals, plus the fact that she's bought and sold real estate all over the U.S. Dr. Bertoli, how are you? Glad to be here, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. No, thank you very much. Your little doggy with you too, right there? Yes, yes, Jake is here. You may hear him later. No, that's so. fine. Speaking of uh, stress reduction, I know a lot of people turn yeah. to pets and, and other <laughs> things in order to calm down. But you know real estate. You know what the buyers and sellers go through when you're, when you're yeah. in that process. Um, mm -hmm. Can you just describe not only personally and then professionally maybe tell us how you mitigate that? Some of your own experience, maybe something that you've had to deal with and then how you did do that. For me, Jeff, it has been so exciting 
because I see this as an alternative, a much, much better alternative to the stock market. When I think okay. of investing my money in a cash flow investment, in, a mon- in an investment that's going to give me literally cash instead of a hope and a wish, I think of real estate. I think of people like you who set us up for success for not just 30 years from now, 20 years from now, but every day for the rest of our lives, I think of you. So to me, it's about two things. One is getting excited about it and feeling feeling the, um, the hope and the, the anticipation of an alternative that makes more sense to my brain and feels more realistic to my brain. Do you and then, f- go ahead, I'm go. sorry. No, no, go no, ahead. No, you go. All right, now, I was just going to say, do you think that people are like you or more, more uh, nervous? I mean, obviously out there in the, in the real world of real estate, you get people who just don't trust anybody. You know, it's the used car salesman approach whereby you can't trust your mortgage broker, you can't trust the real estate agent, the seller's out to rip you off, or vice versa, the buyer's out to rip you off. And there is such built-in mistrust. Uh, how are you overcoming that, and um, what what could be some of the strategies in order to you know get over that? Right. Well, I totally agree with everything you said. First of all, <laughs> and the fact is, when when I was looking as a person, when I was looking at the stock market and what are the costs and benefits, I felt like I had no idea. Right. And it was basically a hope and a prayer. And when I looked at real estate, I could see, okay, I could purchase for this amount and I could rent for this amount, all of which the data is available on Zillow. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to look far. The data is available on any kind of website. It isn't a hope and a prayer. It is very clearly accessible to the regular person like me. This is not my profession. This is your world. This is not my world. This was, I didn't want to be on a wish and a hope and a prayer. I wanted to be on, oh, look at that. Here's what that property is worth. Oh, look at that. Here's what I can rent that out for. So I can have a cash flow investment based on looking very little, doing very little um, of my own investment in my time. And boom, there I had it. And sure enough, as you said, I've invested a lot of the places in the country, right. and I have seven properties now, and I'm making money on all of them. That's great. Do you think that this kind of uh, strategy that you've employed is specific just to you, or do you see a lot of people out there doing the same thing you are? You know what? Not as many. When I start to talk to people, they are like, why haven't I done that? Right. Why haven't I done that? So I feel like it's more the opportunity than it is the current reality. And when I talk to people, they're like, what am I doing? Right. Why am I not doing it your way? That well, is my current experience. I know, I know why they're not doing it. It's because there is a mindset of distrust, of anxiousness, of fear that's built in. And, and your response to that, of course, is, well, just get educated. And, and you can see it's not that hard. Well, my, my experience is, is very basic because, again, my, my field, my profession is not this in any way. Right. But it's just a distrust of or the uncertainty of the stock market. Right. And like, really? I'm just going to hope and wish and pray that works out. And the timing when I want to get out of the market is a high on the market. That's nonsense to me. When I can look at Zillow, when I can look at these other real estate markets, when I can go to professionals like you, like, this is mm-hmm. not a hope and a prayer. This is data, spot on, completely right. available to the novice. And I'm telling you, it wasn't, I mean, Jeff, you know me when I bought right. my first property. So it was three years ago. It wasn't like I'm in this for 20 years. Right. Right, no, and when you went, let's see, where was it? It wasn't St. Louis, it was out here in L.A.? Where was it exactly that you bought your first place? My first place was in D.C., and right, then I bought right. five in St. Louis, right. and then wow. one in Florida, and then one in Florida. And and the fact is, you know, part of it is I was ready to go when the market was ready, and the market was not as slowest, by, by no means as slowest. I bought it tight. And then I bought when it was coming back up. Mm-hmm. The fact is, you have to be ready to say, okay, but you know what, right now, and you know, I know you know this, Jeff, but right now the, the uh, interest rates are on the way up. Yep. They, are not, they are not as high as they're going to be, and they're not as low as they were. And the fact is, now is the time. If you're going to buy, buy now. I can promise you this, a year from now, it'll be higher. Well, a year and a half yeah. from now, it'll yeah. be higher than that. 
Now, the areas that you're buying in, um, are you seeing mostly residences that uh, live there, or are you seeing mostly people renting? Okay. So, you know, many, many people have given up on buying to live and mm-hmm. have gone to the rental market. Yep. People like me have gotten to take advantage of that because the number of people who have given up on owning still have to rent somewhere. They have to live somewhere, sure. They have to live somewhere. Yeah. So it's people like me and like you and like your other customers who get to uh, leverage that and get to, to say, yes, I have a beautiful home that you can rent at a fair rate and everybody wins. I think that's the thing I like the best, Jeff, is that it's not like I'm trying to screw people over or they're trying right. to screw me over. It's a win-win. They don't want to own. And I don't. I and I own and want to rent. So everybody's winning in this situation. Now, um, when you're dealing with, uh, and that's another g- interesting point. So you've not only taken on, uh, you know, your landlord, right? I mean, and the psychological yeah. advantages, disadvantages of owning uh, yeah. versus the reality of owning. Um, yeah, you you speak to it. There's you know you want to make sure that you you're renting to somebody who not only can afford it but also has a gratitude about that, and also that you're fulfilling a need. That's quite a bit different than the quote unquote slumlords out there who are Absolutely. just gouging their their tenants. Absolutely, you're a hundred percent right. I am always looking for the win win, mm-hmm. and when I find tenants, which is you know often now that I have seven properties, sure, I am looking for someone who feels like. <gasps> They are so lucky. Right. And, and that I feel the same. And that we are like, oh, my gosh, this, is, this works for me, this works for you. And we both feel gratitude for the situation. And if you find that, you will never waste a moment. And if you don't find that, you will never regret. You will always regret every moment. You know, the landlord at my office, he always rents 10% under market value. And I asked him about that one day. I said, why do you do that? He goes, because my tenants are so happy. They don't want to go anywhere. They know what's going on out there. Mm -hmm. So if there's an issue with, you know, a pipe or maybe the roof leaks during the rainstorm, nobody's getting upset. Nobody's screaming at me. And I think that is a a terrific attitude. Not that the guy doesn't take care of his buildings, but that both parties recognize that there's a gain here. 100%. And one of the things that I do for my tenants is I send them some kind of thank you. Mm-hmm. At least once a year, once a year, I send them some kind of gift card, some kind of thing to say, I appreciate you. And it's one of the things in our society that is completely undervalued yep. and underdone is to say thank you for yep. being you. You know, I, I, I was reading online. And they were talking about the wave. Now, what does that mean? That means I'm driving around and a guy cuts in front or I cut in front of somebody else. And you just give them the nice wave. Thanks a lot. You know, oh, yeah. it just goes so far. And that's exactly speaking to the, your point here. Yep, 100%. I, I'm a runner, as you right. may remember. Yes. And I run on the streets. <laughs> and I, um, I often have cars who make way for me. And I always say, not only do I give them the wave. But I mouth thank you right. for fishermen who make a way for me. I say I say out loud, thank you so much because I don't have to, but I want to. Right. I want to create a society where gratitude is is is, is absolutely verbalized, so they don't have to feel that you know, like I did that, but what is she, you know? Yeah, but. absolutely right. Listen, Dr. Bertoli, Jeannie, I really appreciate you coming on the show. That went by really quickly, and your insight and also the way that you are handling buying and selling and renting is, is terrific. Thanks very much. We're done already? All right, Jeff. Until <laughs> the next time, thank you so much for having me. And thank you very much. And I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. 
Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, 888-713-2929. That's our telephone number. Pick up the phone. Give us a call. We talk about mortgages. We talk about financing. We talk about real estate. Everything having to do with your decisions that you got to make. you got to make them right now. It's springtime, 2018. This is what's happening, buying and selling a real estate. Kids are getting out of school soon. You're going to move, or you have to move to a new city. There's all kinds of reasons why you're going to need that bigger house. Look, mom and dad are getting older. They need a place to stay. Maybe Maybe one of your kids is coming home and they want to live at home for a while until they get enough money to buy their own place. If you need a bigger place, if you need to move out and get a smaller place, financing is at the key. Interest rates going up, all kinds of things pressurizing the deal. So give us a call at 888-713-2929 and we will be able to help you. I'm Jeff Barton. I'm the host of The Mortgage Voice and uh, we're here each and every week. And I try to bring some guests to the show which are uh, different, interesting, and have to do with uh, financing in many different areas. In California this year, there has been some terrific opportunities in the cannabis world in terms of uh, uh, both growth business obviously and that's not a pun by the way uh, as well as uh, other things having to do in that world financing has always been a question and I and I've found someone someone who we've had on the show before uh, Kamala Rhodes who is uh, gonna enlighten us today uh, about how to finance those kind of business operations or purchase of lands or other things uh, Kamala how are you I'm terrific. How are you today, Jeff? Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. You know, I'm incredibly stressed out, but uh, now that you're going to come on and solve some issues for me about where to put my money and how I can, uh, you know, grow this kind of business, you know, surprisingly, I have a lot of clients who are looking for this kind of financing. Well, you know, it's, you know, to, to capitalize on your palm, the whole, on your pun, the whole business is on fire. Right. <laughs> it's funny. It, it really is. It's, and um, and it, is, it is growing uh, again. So, um, and as, as that happens and as we come into a new era, as, you know, prohibition ends, as yes. it were. Yes, right. Uh, there are a lot of new things that, that need to be addressed and come to light, and obviously this being one of them, and now that, you know, um, that it's that we can do that. It's a huge product. It's actually become ninety five percent of my phone calls because there aren't many of us that do it. Right. Um, and um, and there are you know you have to have the investors and the, there's there's only one bank that actually um, will do it if you go through a bank and then there are several private investors so right. you need to have those contacts in order to make that happen. Okay, let's just get off the top regulation. How are you? And how are you doing this if it's illegal federally yet legal uh, in the state? Well, because it is legal in the state, and we go by California lending law, and we go by uh, what what's governed here in California. So um, it is legal now to have those growth operations uh, so long as you have all of the permits required by the government right. to do it legally. You can't just you know, grow and, and do that. You have to go about it legally, just as if you were going to sell alcohol or sure. grow tobacco or any of those things. Okay, so in this, in this process, once the permits are in place, what, what does someone do? Like, let's say, um, I have a client. Let's just talk about my client. My sure. client has a growing business, and it's already established. They want to expand their business. They want to build a building. They want to buy a piece of land. Is this something that you would be interested or had had contacts in order to help this client? Yes, there are many aspects of, of cannabis lending that we do. We lend on refis and somebody's refinancing what they already have going on. Okay. Um, we do purchases for people that want to purchase uh, a, a startup grow up, depending on what their experience is. Obviously, there are, there are a lot of variables, um, and you know there are whatever. As long as we can lend on the real estate, it's right. something we can do. Okay, and what, what kind of uh, um, investment is uh, the person looking for the loan? I mean, do they have to have like 50% into the deal? I mean, how, how does, how because do, I know traditional lending, I just don't know this world. Sure. Um, so whether you're going with the bank or with a private investor, you're looking at a maximum loan about about 65 or 70%, or as we say, LTV, 65 or 70 loan to value. Of course. Um, which means you have to come in with 25 to 30% of 
the money on your own, or if you have other property, if you own other real estate, of course, we can cross-collateralize. And mm-hmm. uh, for the average borrower who may not know what that is, we can use the equity in you know, their other homes as partial collateral to, in order to get them there. So they can with, use that equity they have as part of their down payment or all of their down payment, depending on how much equity they have in their other real estate. And this is considered a commercial loan? Yeah, it's co- exactly. It's it's considered, you know, uh, well, it, for the mo- for the majority of it, it's done privately. So we uh, commercial private lenders, right? Um, investing, yeah, uh, in a it's just like you would be if they would be investing in something else you're growing. Okay, so um, I, I need a hundred thousand dollars. I want to you know, start growing pot. I own a piece of land. So basically, in terms of borrowing you know, let's say whatever the amount of money that you guys would lend, I would have to come up with some kind of collateral, whether it be the land or whether it be, you know, I guess a building on the land or a private residence that I own in order to collateralize the loan, which you would then give me cash or how, how does that work? Correct. We don't, so just to be clear, we don't lend money to open a business. We are not business lenders. I know you understand that. Sure. We, we lend on real estate. So, okay. um, so yes, you would, um, you know, if you're looking to start something that you've never done before, it's going to be something that's a little harder to get done because they want to know that that you that you have a a strong resume with that you've done it before. Um, Hard to do though, right? Since it just became legal. How, well, how do you prove yes, that? Or unless you've yes been in? No. Okay. Yes no. Dispensaries have been legal for a long time. I see. As long as you've had. A prescription. Right. So there are people who have been doing it for a long time legally, but for medical purposes only. I see. So the only right. thing that's changed in California recently is really the recreational aspect of it. Right. And the fact that it can be sold without a license. That's So all of this has been going on before. So, uh, so it would be just like any other real estate loan in that you come to us and you would say, it, it's just that there are certain, because the real estate value increases, when there's that sort of operation on it, a lot of the investors get a little nervous because they don't want to invest in the land. And then, let's say, for instance, the grower or the dispensary decides to sell it to a different kind of a business that's not a seller or dispensary, and then the value of the land decreases, and the investor is left with not such a great investment. Well, now that the zoning and everything has changed, that protects the investor because if it's zoned for that, it's zoned for that. I see. It protects the investor a lot better. So, uh, again, everything has changed with regards to the zoning and everything right. like that. So you would either come to me with 35 or 30% of the cash for the purchase or the refinance. I see. So if you, were, if you had land and you wanted to just grow something, then, yeah, we could do a refi on your land for a business purpose. Um, as long as the zoning was correct, as long as, long as you had the permits to do it. As long as they're fi- and that's not where my area of ex- expertise necessarily lies. So they have to right. make sure they are doing everything by the book so that we can lend to them. You know, a typical client is what? Hello? Are you there, Ken? Sorry about that. Yes. No problem. Go ahead. I just said the typical buyer or the typical borrower for you is what kind of profile? What kind of person? Are there all kinds? Uh. Well, when I with the typical borrow for this particular product is usually somebody up until this point who has experience in this area and who is looking to now make it lar- get it, make it make their operation larger now that they can right. because before the people who were experts in this field had a limit to how much they could grow at once, and they had a limit to how... To, there were a lot more laws in place because it was strictly for medicinal purposes. Right. So the supply and demand has changed, for sure, uh, because now, uh, you know, whoever wants it can have it. They don't have to have a license. So they have to be able to grow that business, again, no pun intended, yeah. <laughs> to, to the supply and demand needed. So you have people who have been doing a tremendous business, and now they want to you know, buy their neighbor's land and make it even larger or buy a different piece of land because it's got um, more machinery on it or uh, or not more machinery, more space for more equipment 
is, you know, it's a larger space. Um, hey, Cammy, we're up against a clock here. You want to shout out your phone number for anybody that wants to uh, be able to get in touch with you as a result of uh, the conversation here on the radio? You bet. Thanks, Thanks. Jeff. It's sure. 818-370-9301. Again, that's 818-370-9301. And if you have 10 questions, call me 20 times. That's what I'm here for. Excellent. Thank you very much. You know, we're going to have you back because uh, this is a burgeoning growth industry, obviously, and I think that uh, the potential for what you're doing to help people from what I'm doing is, is really there. I really appreciate you coming on the show. You bet. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you very much. That's uh, Camilla Rhodes, and she is a uh, person who can help you get started or, or uh, lend in the uh, cannabis business. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For questions or comments, send emails to info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton. I'm your voice in the mortgage industry, 888-713-2929. That's our telephone number. Pick up the phone and give us a call. We have been talking to some very unusual guests here on the show today. We've talked some about cryptocurrency. We've talked about pot financing. And certainly, we talked to uh, Dr. Bertoli. She was talking about her own success in the real estate world and also trying to, um, I guess, get excited about what potential there is versus uh, what it may be a scary idea is the stock market. As we as we all know, people need to live, they need to rent, they need to go someplace and um, every day get up and go to work, but they need a home. And uh, from her perspective, and I tend to agree with her, although I'm not a great guy at wanting to be a uh, landlord. I just getting the phone calls at 2, 3 in the morning. But what Dr. Bertoli said and also what my landlord at the office does is that they price a little bit less than uh, going market value so that people will be a little bit more understanding of that uh, landlord as opposed to the landlord who tries to get every nickel out of every rental dollar that they pay. So therefore, they're not as apt to be uh, calling someone at 3 in the morning because the shower doesn't work. Uh, and I think that that's, that's a very interesting way to look at real estate. Real estate can be one of those things, uh, one of those investments that you make that can really pay off as long as you're not looking to hit the home run. If you hit a lot of singles, a couple of doubles here and there, it's really a pretty good business because you can get into great partnership with a tenant. You can get into a great long-term uh, relationship with people who just don't want to live because they're getting a good deal. And in this market where rents are escalating, and I mean everywhere they're escalating, from Las Vegas to Florida, uh, from Illinois out here to California, where we are in all of those different states, we've seen rental markets increase. And the reason is very simple. There is not enough housing for people who want to buy. Therefore, people are priced out of the market that is currently available, which means that I got to live somewhere, so I got to go rent. And so therefore, if you can get into a situation as an, either an investor to buy a property to rent, or if you're a renter right now and you're listening to me, trying to find a landlord out there who is willing to say, hey, you know what, I'll give you something at a little bit of a bargain if you, in fact, will work with me if there's an issue with the property. And those are the two win-win situations that Dr. Bertoli was talking about, which makes this whole idea that there's stress in every real estate deal a little bit less because for her and her particular purchase of seven different properties over the last three years, all rental properties, all in different cities, whether it be in DC or in St. Louis or down in Florida, um, for her, it's a win-win situation. So I know there's opportunity out there. Financing is still very cheap. Come on, it's less than 5%. I know it's gone up a point, point and a half in the last 16 months, but in reality, uh, the uh, historical look at what's happening in the marketplace, this is really a cheap deal. Uh, 5%. I mean, when I had my own mortgage, as everyone who listens to the show knows, my last mortgage was a 15-year 5.125% uh, rate. And I never refinanced it when the rates were really, really low. Why? I mean, I was able to make the payment and I was happy with the loan I got and I didn't want to restart the clock. Um, everybody knows that First half of every loan that you get, whether it's a 30-year fixed or 15-year, is all paid into interest. So I would did not want to pay into interest more by lowering down at 3%, knowing that after 15 years I could have the thing paid off, which in fact just happened about six, uh, well, 
six weeks ago, I guess we did that. Uh, okay, let's let's turn to news to use. I wanted to get to rates currently. Rates currently are thirty year fixed four point six. 3%. Uh, 15-year fix is about a half a point less than that. The FHA is going at uh, about 4.25% right now for a 30-year fixed FHA. VA, of course, is about uh, 4.125%. Uh, VA loans are actually really good if you're a, v- a veteran out there and you're thinking, hey, you know what, let me take uh, advantage of my certificate of eligibility, which is the document you need to get in order to get a VA loan. If you're a, uh, a service person, if you're out there who has served and uh, want to buy a house or get into a house, understand each county has their own conforming limits um, to how much you can borrow. Uh, and one of the interesting things is you can actually get a loan, a VA loan for much more than what the conforming limit is. You just have to contribute 25% of what the difference is. So if, let's say the limit is $75,000 and you want to buy $100,000 using a VA loan, you take that $25,000 difference, divide it by four, and that's how much money you have to bring in. And then you can up the limit of what you need to uh, borrow for your VA loan. And by the way, VA loans are 100% guaranteed. So That is a good deal. If you're out there right now and you're thinking, you know what, let's use this VA loan. Can I use it for a purchase? Yes. Can I refi into a VA loan? Yes. Can I buy more than one property with a VA loan? The answer is yes. So all of these things are advantages to the borrower. I know active duty people. I have a uh, a niece who's married to a guy. He's um, in 2021. He's going to be 22 years in, but he's got to do one more deployment. Now, I know they've used their VA purchase, uh, and they're living in a house in South Carolina right now. Uh, he's got to go over and serve one more tour, and, I, and I'm, I wish he didn't have to go, and anybody who is out there that has to go or has relatives over there, I, I totally get it and understand. It's incredibly stressful. Uh, but when he gets out, he'll have 22 years in. He's in the, I think he's in the Greenboro or the green field, or the green leaf. You know, South Carolina has a lot of greens in their names. Anyway, they they basically um, uh, are in a great area of the country, and, um, you know, I, I wish them absolute best. Uh, they have a, my niece has a daughter and uh, her husband. So if, you've, if you're looking for a VA loan right now, it's a really good time to get one. It's lower rate. Uh, it's 100% guaranteed. And if you, due to the conforming limits, it's 100% uh loan. Uh, Let's get into a little bit more. Uh, Regulators have done a lot to reform the financial system since 2008 crisis, but they still haven't fixed the market where the trouble started, the U.S. mortgages. It's an omission they need to put right before the next crisis hits. This is an article in Mortgage News Daily. Uh, We've had the CEO or the COO onto the program before, and we go to that each and every week to try to come up with ideas to talk about into the show. And and what they're talking about here is... uh, What happens when? And we all, anybody that's uh, got a heartbeat that was around in 2007 and 2008, remember what happens when? it. What happens if that happens again or if something similar happens again? Obviously, in the 80s, we had Lincoln Financial. We had the Internet crisis in uh, the 90s. Uh, In the 2000s, we had a couple of recessions. And, of course, in 2008, we had the greatest crash in real estate in the mortgage market that we've ever had before. So what happens and what do the regulators do and how are we supposed to uh, come to terms with that? We are currently in a a regulatory uh, environment where the CFPB is having its wings clipped and a lot of their uh, particular power is being undone uh, and not by, uh, um, you know, angry Congress, but by a very cooperative administration, whether it's Mulroney doing it or whether it's just uh, not fulfilling what uh, Richard Caudry, the actual first CFPB director, wanted to do. Um, regulations on big banks. They're trying to set a new standard by which you're going to have to have a uh, uh, what they call stress test and uh, reserves in line. They're going to try to raise the limit from $50 billion to $250 billion, uh, before you have to do certain HUMDA regulations. Uh, in the um, actual origination front, new loans are making it possible for fraud, more fraud, i.e., if you don't have to provide taxes and all you have to do is provide your verification or your employment information that is then verified with a phone call and a form, uh, there is much more a temptation 
position for people to create a fraudulent situation whereby those documents are faked and phone numbers given for verification are not the phone numbers of an employer but to somebody else. Uh, anybody can build a website uh, in, in terms of uh, – making a business seem as if it's real. Uh, this is one of the problems that we're trying to avoid, obviously, this time. Uh, I think you have to go very long before you see the kind of environment that we had in 2008 today, but there are signs. Uh, certainly in the car industry, anybody out there right now who has a car who has defaulted, you're not alone. By the way, it's, it's the most, um, I guess, egregious or... Uh, red flags or whatever you want to say, whistles blowing. Yeah, car defaults in the U.S. are really, really high. Many, many, many. As anyone who's uh, when watching the news, Ford has just announced that they're going to end production models on all sedans. All sedans. Does that mean they're not selling any? No, it means that sedans that they've sold have defaulted on the loans that they gave people through Ford Finance. That's the real issue here. It's not about the cars themselves and whether they sell or they buy. Look, if you don't sell, you stop making them. But all the cars that are out there currently that have been sold on Ford Finance or other kind of financing for the automobile, that's a real problem. And uh, we're trying to address that in many different ways. But this all lends back to the fact that regulation and the softening of regulation, the changing of the CFPB, and uh, the opening of mortgage products to, um, you know, areas where Fraud can be done more easily, and a reflection of that is in the auto business where the auto loans that they've been making for the last 10 years are not the best auto loans ever, and the clients, the customers, really can't afford to get the car. But there's such a push to make car sales uh, that auto financing in the, you know, everybody, if you can't get a auto finance, go to Ford. That was always the way it was. Anyway, listen, I'm Jeff Barton. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. I'm glad to be back on the air, and thank you very much for listening. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, and we'll see you next time. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. For more on today's topic, visit www.malibufunding.net.